Welcome, everybody, to the iBug Android Insight Call. Today is Wednesday, August 21st, 2024. This call is all about Android. So, whether you have a cell phone, smartphone, Android tablet, Fire tablet, um, Alexa device, Google device, anything that runs on the Android platform is open for discussion. This call is a community where we come and support each other and answer questions, uh, bring up what's happening in Android. So I just want to say welcome to everybody. My name is Ava Caruth. I am one of your facilitators and I am from Houston, Texas. And my co-facilitator is, you want to go ahead, Hershey? Sure thing. Well, welcome everybody. I appreciate that everyone's uh, joining us here tonight at the iBug Android Insight Call. I'm Hershey. I'm from the Central Florida area and I appreciate it that everyone's around. Just to get a little bit of our housekeeping out of the way. Um, you know, we're all sponsored here by iBug today. And you can reach iBug today at iBugToday.org. Uh oh. And you can go there to find out anything about what's going on in the iBug world. So as well as sign, if you don't get the newsletter for them, that's where you can go and sign up and you'll get the newsletter and all updates that iBug has gone on during the month for August is posted. And I know September is right around the corner. So, and if you've missed any of our shows, on and uh, for the iBug Android Insight, you can go to the iBugToday.org, go to the Android Insight tab, and you can view um, our previous shows there. Hershey, you want to give them how else they can view us? Absolutely. So you know what, Ava, today when for the show, I found a quick way if anybody just where how do I join the zoom link if you go to ibugtoday.org forward slash zoom our zoom link is really easily found now so I really appreciate that to our web dev team and if you were uh, or if you are using YouTube if you type in ibug Android or ibug today or ibug Android insight either of the one will work um, you'll first find that it'll take you to the channel ibug today and then if you go to the channel, you'll find tabs. One of the tabs is videos, uh, live playlists and community. So if you were to go under the uh, yeah, playlist tab, you'll find that there's about 39 videos of our past shows. So it is uh, really cool. useful for people that want to maybe listen back to, hey, what did that one guy say? Or what did that one woman say the other day? It's really useful to go back and find that information again. So uh, again, if you use YouTube, uh, type in iBug, I-B-U-G today. And also, in the meantime, if you aren't on this call and you wanna ask questions or just kinda of get involved, you're able to use our mailing list and to get to subscribe on, or get subscribed onto that, it's iBug, I-B-U-G, Android, Insight, I-N-S-I-G-H-T, plus subscribe, subscribe, dot uh, at groups that i okay let's try that all over again so ibug i-b-u-g android a-n-d-r-o-i-d insight i-n-s-i-g-h-t the plus sign subscribe at groups.io and you're able to uh at least just uh send in a blank email and join the list so if there are questions in the meantime or if they're uh you know something that's bugging a, a problem that might be uh, happening to you, you could get information on that. And sometimes people just, you know, share their insight of, hey, I found this case for my new phone. How 
can I do this, that, and the other? So those are just a couple different ways you could at least interact with us. But Ava, do you want to see? There's I hear a lot of new names today. Should let's I want to interact with them. Let's interact with them, please. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. So let's have everybody introduce yourself. Let us know how you heard about us and what type of Android device you have. Okay, so floor is open. Okay, so while we're waiting for somebody to get brave and step up and go first, let me just do a little segue. Y'all know every Friday evening, we the uh, iBug has their virtual movie night. And this Friday on the 23rd, the movie is news of the world 2020 and is rated pg-13 uh the room opens at 7 15 for the social hour and the before the movie and the movie starts at eight so don't forget the iBug movie friday night now anybody want to go first and introduce themselves i'll be willing to go first all right, and you are? My name is Daisy. I am from Nebraska, and I've originally heard I heard dog from Hershey himself. Welcome, All right. Welcome, Daisy. Nice oh, to have you on. Up to date, take us personal meeting room. Awesome, down. thank you. Hey, okay, so, okay, I was going to say, remember our call is being recorded, so any background noise, please keep it to a minimum. Thank you. Next. I'm Ryan. Welcome, um, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. I I heard about this call from uh, Hershey. It, he actually sent me a message on Facebook about it. Um, I I primarily use the iPhone, but I am a technology instructor, so I try to keep up with Android stuff. Really nice having you, Ryan. Thank you for joining Hi. us. Yes, Ryan. Thank you. And first Hi. Time caller. Hey. Hello. Hi. I'm, hi, I'm Shelly. Um, I learned from uh, friend of mine. Best people's by Hershey. I don't know. <laughs> I know him as Harshit, but anyway, um, it's nice to meet everybody. I have a Smart Vision Three. Um, I just figured I'd join this and see what I get out of it. Okay. Awesome. Well, nice to have you, Shelly, and. Yeah, with Smart Vision 3, that is an Android device, so uh, it'll be great to, to get your insight or to know how it works for you. But nice having you along. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually using my uh, computer because I could not figure out for the life of me no worries. how to get on Zoom with my phone, so... We could, we could probably talk about that on the, on the show a little bit later then, I guess. That, that could be a good question. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Linda. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. I'm from North Houston and my device is a Lady A. All right. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thank you. This is uh, Foster. I'm from Houston. Um, I have many Android devices, uh, but my favorite, which I'm using right now with my Zoom, is the Galaxy Z Fold 3. Okay, so I'm going to see a trend here. Welcome, Foster. So we're going to get all the Fold people lining up, right? Who's next? Who's next with their Fold? Yeah, phone? yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'll go next. Go ahead. My name is Lori Nelson, and I'm from Iowa City, Iowa. This is my first time in the group. And uh, my friend, Intisire Duncan, told me about this group. I have an Alcatel cell phone. Um, I'm Zooming with my Mac book. But um, I'm here because I use an Android phone. Well, welcome. Nice to have you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, it's your first time as well. So uh, this is great. We got a few first timers here tonight. Renee. Hey, Ms. Renee. Welcome. Hey, I've been in 
the group for a while. I have a lot of uh, my my primary device is my Pixel Eight phone and Pixel Watch, but I use Samsung TVs and tablet and a lot of uh, Google TV devices, and I have a a lady also. Awesome, awesome. Well, glad to have you again. Yes, I'll go. Hi, this is Quentin. Um, here in Houston, uh, I use the Z Fold Five. I have a a lot of Android devices, the A ladies. Um, no Google yet, but getting there. Um, I've been coming for a while, so thanks, Hershey. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us again, and uh, thank you for letting everyone else know. So, appreciate it. My name is Hi, Seven. I'm from Go ahead. Austin. I have a Pixel 8 6 Pro tablet, Google tablet, Pixel tablet, I guess, and watches from Samsung and Google and Google devices. A lady devices, Pixel Buds, Galaxy Buds, and soon to be the Pixel 9 Pro. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. And uh, I know when we always ask these questions, you have some great answers. So thank you so much for joining us again and uh, keep it moving, I guess. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm from Texas. This is my first time I heard about it from an email from Michael and I'm on an Android phone and I have an A-Lady. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, again, first time or another. So you, we have plenty tonight. So appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having it. Sure thing. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? Where are they coming from? Hi, I'm Judy and I'm from Gainesville, Florida. And I heard about this group because I went to the ACB convention in Jacksonville and there was some a representative there and uh, they signed me up on the email and I've been getting I've been getting bombarded by emails for iBug. So I I just thought I'd try this because I have an Android smartphone that's a Motorola I think it's an edge I uh, the the guy at the Verizon place when I got I was looking into getting a smartphone last year he said you know you might want to just kind of start with a another one other than an Apple phone because I was having trouble swiping and tapping and all that stuff so do appreciate so that you're also from Florida this. so I'm from we have a few people from Daytona Beach here so you know we have we have Florida, I recognize we got, Nancy I recognize Nancy right and Brian yeah right so uh definitely and we'll we'll be happy to talk more about the types of phones and different questions so please keep your questions ready for us and uh nice having you tonight thank you thank you anybody else want to introduce themselves and let us know where you're coming in from and such that this is john from bc canada um I do have an Amazon speaker and a Google speaker. Yes, I am an iPhone user, but I am still curious about um, Android Android slash Google products. Well, really appreciate you coming back, John. I know you've been here a couple of calls and uh, it's really great that you've come back. And again, we're all trying to help each other out. It doesn't matter if we have iOS or Android. So really do appreciate that and hope the weather is uh, decent up there in Canada. All right, anybody else? Uh, just a quick note, as a lot of us on this call, we are uh, both iPhone, Apple users and Android users, whether some have the iPad or their um, iPhones or any of their other devices. So I'm happy to see we have a great mix that we like to cross over. 
and I want to welcome um, uh, all the instructors that are on here because that is nice to know that your mind is open to Android as well. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, so. All right, so anybody else want to introduce uh, where are you coming in from or any of that? Uh, who am I? Well, I'm Mershi, uh, coming in from Daytona Beach, uh, Central Florida area. And let's see, I have a S22 Ultra that is my daily phone. Uh, I got a Pixel Fold laying around here. Here it is. Um, I have iPhone 14 Pro. Uh, you know, let's throw the iPhone in there too. So a lot of uh, exchanging of notes and different things of what features are available on both platforms. So that's just a little bit about me and uh, Miss Amazon Lady. You want to yes. introduce yourself? Yeah. Well, I'm Ava Caruth, and I'm from the Houston area. And oh my gosh, I have a Samsung mm -hmm. Note 25G. Mm -hmm. I have Samsung tablets, uh, Fire tablets. I have Lady A devices. From the speaker to the Echo shows, I have the Fire TV, and I had to retire my Samsung TV. It decided to leave me. So, row, row. Hopefully, we get into TV to maybe talk about tonight. But again, uh, glad to be on again, Ava. And uh, wow, it's August. Summer's pretty much winded up. Any new uh, things that you heard about in the, in the grapevine? I mean, I've been hearing a lot of things. Um, other than I saw the new Pixel 9 has come out, and then, oh, and I'm loving those Pixel Buds I got to read about, so we gonna let you go ahead and let's let them know what's coming up in the Android world. Huh, Android world, Android world, Whew. so <laughs> let's see, the month was August. The date was the 13th. And uh, it was at one o'clock. Um, Google had their Google event this time around. And in this event, we were able to uh, find out what Google was up to. Uh, especially, we, we, we knew what they were up to, but what really was, was available in the, as far as feature sets are concerned. So uh, the Pixel 9 came out. And then its cousin, the Pixel 9 Pro, and then its uh, big brother called the Pixel 9 Pro XL, and then its other cousin, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. So we have four yes. devices out on Google's uh, uh, lineup for the new Pixels. Then they came out with a thermostat, which is the uh, Nest Learning Thermostat Generation 4. Uh, we have the Nest... Uh, uh, well, they call it the Google Streamer now. We are not using it. They, they've done away with the name Chromecasts. So it's not that Chromecast is dead. It still will get your updates. However, um, you will just have this newer device that has, I think, 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and it works as a hub. So if you have a light bulb or anything like that, you're trying to control through it, it'll play or act like a... Uh, a thing to control it and then we also have um let's see we also have is that all of them i think that's all of them yeah I think watch. That is all. oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we forgot about the watch and the earbuds thank you mr Foster. yeah I think... so uh you know it's been a while since i've worn a watch i need to get on the smart watch wagon when bleh, wagon rather but uh, just haven't got there yet. And so we have the uh, Pixel Buds Pro 2 and the Watch 3. And uh, what I hear about the the watch, and maybe if it wasn't a watch, it might have been the Pixel Buds. It works on iOS too. So don't be alarmed if it, you know, will it work on my, it will, because I read it right from the Google Store website. So that was really mm. incredible to read right on the Google website to say, hey, it works on iOS too. And uh, again, we're all dealing with, you know, pricing and 
expensive devices. So we wanted to interact amongst our ecosystems. Um, the phones, let's go back to the phones real quick. The phones from the 9 is $799. The uh, 9 Pro is for $999. The, the 9 Pro XL is for uh, 9 Pro XL uh, $1099. The Pixel Fold is for $1799. The earbuds uh, coming in around uh, 248 250 I want to say. I think it was like something around that price range. It's too many prices to keep in mind. And then the watch around 350 So those are just some devices to explain. But um, we will we'll be done for the year for Android devices to be released. Uh, the Apple device will come out next year or next month rather. So uh, next year in January is when the Samsung S series released their phones. So the S25 is slated for January. But you know what? That's enough for me. That's just about what's been out and what have you. But Ava, let's uh, get into these questions. Maybe there's more questions to be had rather than just uh, tell what's out there. This is Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. Um, according to the Google support page, the other watch three is not supported on iOS, but the Bluetooth buds are because the it's buds. just Bluetooth okay. and that's just the standard. Right. Appreciate mm -hmm. that, Kevin. Thank you for that information. This is Renee. Go ahead, Miss Renee. Yeah, when I heard um, Ava first mention the buds, I looked at those um, when they came across my email and I've never really been in person for buds because I always feel like they fall out of my ears. But those look like they might actually stay in. Has anybody demoed any of those? I know they're not out yet. Just curious if anybody knows anybody that's had any personal feedback about how secure they stay in your ears. This is Kevin. Go ahead. So I have the Pixel Buzz Pro and I don't have a problem with them falling out of my ears at all. But um, I also have the Pixel Buds A series, and those have the fins that they brought back for these. So they, um, you turn them, and they actually lock into your ear. And they have the different sizes. Oh, they actually come in different sizes. The the fins, I think they do. Um, oh, but okay. But you just turn it until it. If it only has one size, then it just gets larger and larger as you turn it. So that's what will make it lock in. Oh, okay. Okay. I was wondering how those worked. But they look like they might actually be more secure in my ear than just something that sets in your ear. Okay. This is Foster. The, Foster. Uh, the fans are part of the um, the ear tip, right? Yeah, I think on these, I think it's actually built in. So they may not have the different sizes like most of the okay. other ones do and like some of the other ones that the other ones have. Like they were giving out the Sony Link earbuds at the convention. And so those have the removable ones with the fins. So those are separate. But I think the Pixel A series, I have to get my set real quick. But I think it just kind of gets increases in size so it'll lock into different size ear canal or the, that part of your ear and yeah this is Hershey this is what I've also heard uh, according to the earbuds that as, as much as you twist them in it's kind of the, the way they're secure um, we haven't really seen too many people uh, talk about them just yet so um, I know 9 to 5 Google had uh, quite a decent explanation on it so that's a good resource to potentially look them up just to get an idea of how do they look and see and feel. Yeah. And then those have the Gemini built built in. Oh. Sure do. Talk about that AI, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, if we have more questions, uh, again, the floor is open to you guys. Uh, please feel free to ask. Linda. Go ahead, Ms. Linda. Um, I have several Lady A's, and when I ask it something, two of them will answer. How do I unconnect them so they don't talk at the same time? 
you change their name. So, uh, Ava, uh, and you said changing the name. Uh, where would you change the name at? Uh, actually, you can just talk to it. Say, Lady A, uh, change name, and then you have the choice of computer. Um, oh, what's the other one? Lady A, computer. I won't, Echo, maybe I your speaker one. might not go off, but Ziggy, I don't know if Ziggy okay, still is. Yep. <laughs> right. Echo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Those are the names. So Great. Echo, Ziggy, and there's one more. Yeah. Yeah. There's four. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for that. And so, yeah, if you change the name, um, you potentially might get, uh, less interference and then the Alexa app as well. You were probably able to pair and group some of these speakers as well if you needed to have them as such. So maybe, you know, if, if a couple of them are in different rooms or different elements in that sense, uh, you could probably customize uh, according to your needs. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, any more questions, thoughts, any more? Uh, Whoever's next, feel free, feel free to just uh, say who you are and ask your question away. I just wanted to just left the meeting. Okay, I'm not hearing anybody as such. I, I have a question. This is Lori. I'm very on, Lori. to all of this. I don't even know what you're talking about when you say a lady A. No problem. Can you so, explain it to me? Sure. Um, Ava, you want to explain that one yeah. real quick? Well, we, you use, so many. <laughs> <laughs> we use Lady A when we're online because if you have your mic open, um, it's, it's actually Alexa, and usually that will trigger other people's devices to start talking and ask questions. Uh -huh. So the Lady A is just the Amazon um, Alexa devices. So I, smart speaker and stuff. Okay. Right. And you have a speaker set. You have two kind of sets. This is Hershey, by the way. And so you have the show, which comes with a screen and a little camera. So if you were to perhaps, uh, you know, see what's on a food label or see what you're holding up, um, mm -hmm. the Echo shows are decent for that. And then you have your speakers that if you wanted to say, hey, play this XYZ podcast, um, it will be able to uh, play that podcast for you uh, just by your voice. And then also uh, for that same uh, matter, if you wanted to uh, change the dimming of your lights or change the color of your lights, if they were color changing light bulbs, for example, uh, all of those things can be done by set device. I see. So the Lady A is it's not a phone, it's a... It's a speaker or a uh, screen with a speaker, if you want to think of that it that you way. would attach to a phone or a computer? Um, you typically yes. set it up to a uh, through a phone, and okay. it's through the A-L-E-X-A app. I just would rather spell it out so everybody's speakers don't go <laughs> berserk. So, uh, yeah, so you're able to use that as um, kind of... A setup point and then also if you have skills sometimes there people have skills set up on them but um, I think a couple of people have some answers here let me uh, well, open the, uh, the the floor maybe if other okay. people have answers well I've yeah. heard of um, Alexa I guess but I just um well you may know it as the echo dot mm -hmm. echo dot yes okay again I'm I'm new to all this but um, okay yeah that's no worry. The Echo Dot, as, as stated, it's really compact in size. So think of a a smushed uh, square speaker, like a two by two thing that just gets smushed, yeah. uh, or like a flying saucer looking shape potentially. Then you have a cylindrical type of device, which is the Echoes, and those are taller. And then they have speakers that are much larger I, again i don't have any in my possession to describe them but uh, if ava or anybody else on the call wants to describe theirs uh just to give you know a little bit more insight on that all right yeah. thanks for explaining 
Yeah, this go, is Foster. Go, go ahead, Foster. Yeah, yeah. So those those are two of them, and then some of the later models of the Echo um, the Echo speaker uh, is shaped kind of like a snow globe. So it's round, kind of like Epcot Center for you guys in Florida, and mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, they have a big one, and then they have a smaller one. And then, uh, was it last year, Ava? I think it was last year, year before last, they came out with the Echo Pop, which is last small. Year. Last year, which is sm it's small like the Echo Dot, but it kind of, it's kind of like sits at a 45 degree angle and it's kind of like a, uh, like if you were to cut an orange in half. So it kind of fires, kind of fires upward, but it's, it's small, it's a small speaker. And uh, like I have one and I have a little, I have it in a cradle. And so the speaker and the power adapter are a part of this cradle and it plugs into the wall. So you can easily hang it on the wall if you have a, you know, a low plug, a high plug, wherever you put it at, you can put it all together. But as Hershey said, they all use the, the same app, which you can use through your phone. And then uh, speaking of Apple, you can actually, if you have Apple Music and Apple Podcasts, you can actually enable those skills on the Echo and have have it play music and podcasts from your, your Echo device. Thank you for that, Foster. Yes, yes, indeed. And I guess the pop is more like a, a bedside clock, if you want to think of that. And... Uh... Maybe it might wake you up and let you know what the news or the temperature is and all of that fun stuff. So um, could be a useful device. And of course, uh, to flip the head on the table with that is Google has its own. So you have Google has a Nest Audio, which is a tall, uh, almost a, well, kind of a cylindrical, mushed cylinder type of speaker. Uh, there's the, uh, the display, the hub. Let's see, the display is called a hub. Let me try to hold it up here in front of me. So the display is about a seven inch screen. And again, the same uh, same reference. You could ask it to do things, play podcasts, music, etc. cetera. Uh, there's the Nest Mini, which is the cheaper device to get into. So that sometimes goes on sale for like 20, 30 bucks or Spotify and said companies sometimes even give them away for free. So, uh, just to have something smart in your home to be able to then uh, utilize smart light bulbs or changing the thermostat to something cooler or warmer, depending on the weather. Uh, they could be really useful devices and it basically enable you to use your voice to control those speakers or uh, screens, so to speak. And of course, uh, they do use the Google Home app uh, to control on a phone or if you want to, if you're in a room that just has a speaker, your phone's dead. You can still control said devices in your home. And if you have other uh, components in the house that could utilize it, such as uh, washer dryers, uh, sometimes smart devices these days, everything is getting smart. And uh, so you're able to have uh, these little devices sprinkled around your house to assist with those kind of activities. All right. So thank you for that question. And uh, if anybody else any, has any more thoughts on that or wants to add on or have any other questions, please, please feel free to stay. Mr. Nay. Nee. Go ahead, Mr. Nay. Nee. And just for me personally, I mean, I use both of the devices, the A lady and the G lady both. Um, but for me, the big best thing about them is just the everyday stuff. Every morning when you wake up, you can do a routine where you can just say, you know, Good morning to it, and it'll tell you the latest news, the weather, what's on my calendar. And I love the device for being able to do things like keep up with my grocery list and stuff like that. There's so much you can do with it. They really are assistants, you know, no matter which one you use. I personally use both of them, G Lady for most of my stuff and the A Lady for a few other things because there's certain things that you can get on the A-Lady, like uh, certain uh, groups like ACB's radio and stuff like that. Things like that are on there. But 
I I don't know. I'd be really upset if I ever had to give him up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is Foster. Go Yeah, ahead, this Foster. is Foster. Um, and then see, like a lot of us are Prime members, so of course, if you have Prime, um, you might also have Kindle. You may also have uh, um, Audible. And if you have those uh, things like Kindle and Audible, even though even though the Kindle books themselves, a lot of them are not. Uh, Are not audio. If you have a uh, Echo device, you can actually have it read your uh, your your uh, books from your Kindle for you. So you can do that with the uh, Echo. That's a nice feature. I like. Good point. And again, just to say Prime was Amazon Prime, just to give a bit more branding. If I know some of us are really brand new to these devices and uh, pieces of equipment, so uh, thank you for that, Foster. This is, This is Ava. John from Canada. Go ahead, John. I just wanted to say I like the Amazon speakers because of the whisper mode and being able to adjust the speaking rate. Um, If, if there's a way to adjust the speaking rate of a Google speaker, I don't know how to do it. So that's why I like the Amazon speaker. Hey, it's Hershey. Uh, good point. Uh, I don't know of anything like that, but uh, we heard a lot about AI over the Pixel event. And with the Pixel phones, you could press a button and it'll talk to you like you're talking to a person. I wouldn't be surprised if that jumps into the speakers and uh, screens of sorts, like the, the display and whatnot, the hubs. So um, yes, uh, that is a great feature for the whisper mode, especially, I think. Um, however, it just depends on how much, uh, I guess, how much people are complaining or really want that feature. And I think we don't complain enough or maybe not complain complain is a bad word but maybe you know suggest that uh hey we should have whisper mode or have uh different modes that could really uh i guess uh, close the gap between the two hi uh, this is shelly go ahead shelly so one thing that and now i you know i only have a smart vision three um but One thing that I've always been, I'm sorry, it's kind of off topic. No, One thing I've always been kind of fascinated by with like any sort of device is the different voices because of all the voices names. And I don't understand why they've stopped doing that. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to ex see any voices on uh, my phone. Wish I did. Anybody have some insight from Michelle? This is Kevin. Go ahead, oh. Kevin. So it depends on where you're coming from as far as voices. So the voices for the assistant and the voices for the text to speech. So on the Google side with both, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's something that's modern that's happening. So They do things like if it's a guy, it's the pink voice because you would expect it to be the woman. So they went from using voices to using, so it's all part of this, not doing gender assignments and all this other stuff. So nothing has names. Everything is either numbers or colors. And so that's why you don't have the names anymore. So you'd have to use something like vocalizer or um acapella to keep the voices to keep the names to keep them straight but everything is just a number now and we're just waiting for the day that they bring the high quality voices to the text to speech side like they had for a short time um, yeah i'm 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 so this is shelly again i'm sorry i have an i you know what it is i have an obsession with names i've always that's been my biggest thing is like screen reader voices names and so i've, I've i'm sorry for that i just i missed that <laughs> totally fine. 
So okay. Well, like I said, like as as uh, Kevin alluded to, vocalizer. Um, I on my phone use the vocalizer Ava Voice, and I on my uh, sure. PC use Jaws, and uh, well Fusion, but I use Ava Voice because for me, it's not really disturbing for a long periods of listening to somebody babble at you. So <laughs> some some of the voices like Zoe, it sounds like a strict principal call, you know, being called to the principal's office maybe. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it, it just depends on what is uh, discernible for what you could hear. Uh, some people prefer the male voices in, in, in turn just because it's far more clear. Um, so at, at this point, it just for the assistant, that's one thing where they've gone with colors. The rest of them, it's more like numbers. And it's kind of across the board with iOS or if it's Android uh sure there's eloquence and stuff like that still floating around but you'll find more and more that those namesakes are not as uh you know name them what you'd like and call them to what your name might be for them so that could be an alternative okay all right well thank you for that question You're so any more questions thoughts uh please feel free like i said stage is yours Nancy, just left the meeting. So this is Daisy. Hey, go ahead, Daisy. Great. So uh, I was just curious because I'm very familiar with the A lady, but what can you exactly do with the Google uh, smart speakers? Okay, I heard a lot of Googlers and Google's people with speakers. This is Renee. Renee. This is Renee. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're, they're, like... Both of them, I'm sure, have routines. You can put routines in there that will do a combination of things for you. Like mm -hmm. you, you might create one that says, you know, bedtime, and it turns off all your lights uh, that you have that are smart lights or it might dim one light that you want to have dim. It might start your room them. before you or make sure your garage door is closed and set your thermo. It can do a whole lot of things, the routine saying. And the morning one can, like I said, they, they have a standard morning one that tells you the weather, the latest news, what's on your calendar for the day, all that kind of stuff. I mean, everything from, um, you know, recognizing, you know, People answering doorbells, um, setting lights, setting timers, um, looking up recipes. You know, I, I hate they took away one feature I used to love, like asking where my husband was, but they won't do that anymore. They used to use they used to use the location because we location shared, and I could just ask the speaker, and it would tell me where he was. I hate they took that one away. Probably some security reason for that, but oh well. Um, but um, I mean, there there is so much that you can do with this. It's it's like un, pretty unlimited. But like I say, my favorite thing is things that I like to do. You know, I my husband does the grocery shopping, but I keep track of everything and I cook. So whenever I, wherever I am, when I run out of something, whether you know it's you know paper towels or broccoli, you know I you know I add it to my grocery list and I use Google Keep as a shared list. Um, with uh, with my husband so he has access to the list you know so i can update that that's like one of my favorite things always updating my grocery list and i and you can create multiple lists if you want one for hardware store you want one for your honeydew list or whatever um you mm. can you can do all those things calendar because i don't drive you know my husband does all the driving so we keep our calendars together and, and putting stuff on my calendar I, I i hate trying to put stuff on my calendar manually when i can put it on with voice and i can just add something if i need to to what i put on with voice you know and then being able to some devices you can control you know also some tvs and other things anything that's going to be connected to your um system that's compatible pretty much most of them you can control with your device so that's pretty awesome so thank you for that response i didn't know the uh google speaker could do that much honestly yeah um, you can uh this is go ahead, foster. Go ahead, foster um and speaking of shopping you can actually shop with the google speaker too so you can if you yeah. have you know because because it's relate because it's connected to your google account so then and you have your wallet if you have your wallet set up you know with your default purchase 
you can actually shop through the speaker and mm. uh purchase items and you know um ha you know check out and everything and and then you know have the whatever the product is shipped to you so you can do things like that as well and you can make phone calls. yep yeah you can make phone call and if you lose your device you can say, yeah you can tell to find it and, uh, somebody screen reader yeah. yeah and if you like uh if you like renee myself and hershey um if you got multiple google devices it'll ask you which one you look at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and the displays you know you can use those too if you have like a doorbell or a camera you know you, you can tell it to show you the front door or show you my backyard camera on your display and and also on the display a lot of times i don't if I'm busy in the morning and I don't feel like turning on the TV, but I want to hear the news, I can just tell it to play YouTube TV or play ABC on YouTube TV and it'll put ABC on YouTube TV right on my display and play it. Yeah. You know, so. And Daisy, so quick one just to show you about uh, finding my phone. So let's find my Pixel Fold. So I'm going to say the words to mine. Hopefully it doesn't trigger everybody else's, but. Okay, Google, where's my Pixel Fold? And ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, find my <laughs> Pixel Fold. So, I mean, it is useful. Sometimes they get your phones and stuff, you know, you're in your comforter, they're in the couch, the dog ate it. No, please don't eat it. Um, <laughs> but uh, just in that sense of utilizing it for your home smart devices, I, if you have your doorbell, at least it's, it'll ring, somebody's at the door. And if you have more than one speaker in each room, then you have a decent way. Not to say that the Echo, Echo devices don't do that. It's mm -hmm. just uh, to have kind of that failover or sometimes we mentioned the uh, app earlier, it's called uh, Google Keep, which mm -hmm. pretty much comes with most Android and Samsung devices. So to make a list or to add something or you just wanted to jot something down with your voice, um, it's super useful. And I, I mean, I, again, I find Calendar really useful as well to say, okay, remind me, I have a meeting with Daisy next week. Right? And then bam, it's in my calendar and it'll ask me what time and all of that fun stuff. So when I go back to my phone, it's going to give me all that information as I needed it. So uh, to, it, the Google Home app is what controls that ecosystem. But if you want to know more, mm -hmm. uh, more than happy to show you that. And this also, is Kevin. go ahead, Kevin. Oh, I just wanted to say um, all those things are wonderful and great. But the main thing is that the power of Google search, that's what sets it apart from all the others. Mm -hmm. Thought that was obvious, Kevin. No. No. <laughs> okay. Well, so, so, so well, could you could well, you explain the differences there, Kevin? Too. Well, it's just that I mean, most people when they think of search, they think of Google anyway. So it's Google with Google, with Google. But just <laughs> I mean, you can ask, um, you know, Alexa or whoever. You can ask them questions, but they don't have their own search engine. I mean, anybody, any other assistant that you ask, whether that's Siri or whatever, they're using somebody else, but Google is using its own, its own systems, its own, you know, its own network. So, um, so it, that's what to me sets it apart. Like if I'm going to go to something and I need to know, even if I'm going to ask it, like, what color matches with this, there's just a whole network, the whole web is at its disposal. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Ava, you had uh, a little bit of insight to say? Oh, and also when you're away from home, you can always go to your Google Home app and um, actually if you wanted to send a message to your home, a broadcast, like I'm on my way in or something, you can actually do that from the um, app as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another another thing, 
this is Foster. Another thing you can do, um, and you can, and some of these features are the same with with the Echo devices too. Another thing you can do is like uh, if you have a Android TV or if you have the, uh, well, you said they're changing it from Chromecast now. They changed the name of it. But if you have that Google streamer, so if you have that device connected to your TV, you um, you uh, can have the, the speaker or know what uh, what your Chromecast is because you can give your Chromecast a name like the young lady says she like names. So you can name your Chromecast and you can tell, you can say, you know, okay, Google, um, show me doorbell on Foster's Chromecast and it'll it'll uh turn on my TV and it'll open up my Eufy doorbell camera and display it on my TV so I can see who's on my front door at my front door cuz I don't have a uh like the the little uh what they call it the, the, uh, what Perfect. they call the Google one? No, the Google, the little Google tablet. The, I don't have the Google Hub, the little with the screen oh, on it. I don't have display. I don't have that. So I just do it through. I just do it through my Chromecast. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Great insight. Uh, if you have more questions, Daisy, feel free. The stage is yours. Yeah. Hershey, who was the lady that said she had the Motorola phone? I believe it was a friend from Gainesville, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if they're still on, but uh, uh, Motorola also uses a uh, uh, pure Android. So uh, current version of Android, just to give everybody the heads up, is 14. Uh, 15 is in beta 3.1 or something like that. So we should have Android 15, give or take, probably by next month when it's uh, re ready to be baked and to be available for all. So, uh, yeah, those are some insights there. More questions or thoughts? This is John from BC Canada. Go ahead, John. Um, so my apologies because I, uh, my reference is from iOS and VoiceOver, but I'm wondering if there are Android equivalents to like the, um, the auto select speaker and call and um, and the Android equivalent to the, um, to um, muting voiceover speech kind of thing where you can mute talk back so uh, this is Hershey. are you asking on like pixel devices if you can mute talk back or are you talking about on like smart devices like um like more like um mobile devices like android smartphones yes um i could technically show you let me my pixel connected here. Just give me two seconds. Wait, keep your finger on the sensor a little longer. Okay, so the pixel phone is uh yapping away. Device unlocked. Home. Accessibility in Daytona Beach to home. Be my home. Home. Let's see. AI. Ambition AI. Blah blah blah. Okay, I don't want it to talk. So if I took two fingers, triple tap and held it, it should say speech turned off. Spoken feedback is off. Spoken feedback is off. Do the same thing. Spoken feedback is on. And hopefully that's uh, loud enough. Let me. Home. Oh yeah, Home. I heard it. Thank you. Yeah, we go. So, uh, in in those uh, general aspects of just turning speech on and off, I personally think the two finger triple. I mean, it it feels like gymnastics sometimes with all the fingers, but I also tend to change. I go into the settings and change the setting for it. So sometimes I'll change it to swipe left and down. Spoken feedback is off. And that's just with one finger. I'm spoken feedback is I on. could just draw a little square or you know, half a square on the edge of my screen. And to me I find that much faster. Um just like iOS play pauses or the magic touch is two fingers double tap. I have that availability to double tap and play pause. Or again, I change some of my 
gesture settings to uh, a one finger gesture. So swipe up and left is usually pay, play pause. So definitely uh, available to uh, to you. And the just like in iOS where you have all your commands, I think it's what it's called. Yes. Um, you're able to go to TalkBack and then change in, change all the gestures and to what they do. So for some people that might be a little bit low vision, they might enjoy color inversion. So I set a, a couple gestures to that color inversion where swiping right and down for me specifically, I could ha flick on the color inversion, you know, invert the colors if the website is too bright and I want it to go to dark mode or vice versa. So those are just some ways I personally use it, but uh, I'll leave it to the audience to let you know if they have any other insights. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else and have any? This is Kevin. Oh, I could ahead, think Kevin. his other question was something about calling on speakerphone. You have to actually give it a specific command. The default is not to call and um, have it go to speakerphone automatically or whatever iOS does. But you have to actually say call so and so on speakerphone. Um, if that's what, if I think that I understand your first question. This is John from Canada. So, oh, sorry. I didn't know if I had to wait to be called. No, you, you're good. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So just to kind of uh, give more context on iOS, like when you turn on auto select speaker and call, then um, it will go to the internal speaker when you put your, your ear near it, and then it'll switch to the speaker, the external speaker when you but move your your ear away from it. So uh, I was just wondering if there's an Android equivalent to that because it's just really convenient. So um, at one time, this is Kevin, at one time Samsung was doing that. Um, and so now you have to download a third party app. I think that um, people in the Android ecosystem didn't appreciate that the way that people seem to on iOS. And I think that they complain because Samsung rarely removes features that mimic Apple. And that <laughs> one they took away right away. Okay, thank you. But Sam one, Samsung was the only company, I think maybe Motorola toyed with it for a while, but they removed it just as quickly as they added it. So you'd have to get a third party app to do it now. Yeah, this is Renee. Go ahead, Miss Renee. Yeah, I remember that feature on Android. It used to drive me crazy because um, I didn't expect it to be doing that. Um, but I do have a quick question for you, Hershey. You said you triple tapped with two finger the... triple tap and hold. That's oh, the and hold and hold. Yes, yeah, because I triple tapped and released and. It started cycling through all my icons on my desktop and reading. I them to think me. that that's, is that's read from read top from or next item. Read. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't and know that. That is read from next item, but it's going to be read. It's going to change in Android 15 to read from current item. It's going to be like insert down arrow and jaw. Huh. Hmm. So oh. basically, a say all in Jaws language. Yeah. Okay, so triple yeah. tap with two fingers and hold turns it on and off. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, the good thing this is Foster. The good thing I like about it though is um the 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 gestures that I, that I use most frequently, I kind of make those easier, <laughs> you know, easier to use. Um, whereas the ones I least use, I'll leave those with the more uh gestures that take more gymnastics to do and again uh just for everybody it, if you want to learn your gestures or some of this stuff might be overwhelming because you're not a talkback user or you know you might use low vision products uh, as far as low vision products are concerned select to speak is one product that can work for you to read just you know minimal things but with talkback a lot of this stuff is customizable. And if you took four fingers and tapped on your screen or double tapped, you would get your talkback uh, tutorial or a gesture practice screen. So 
that way you could at least learn to you know how to control said phone and that works for for any android device as far as uh android on the pixel side or on the samsung side so i'm going to quickly just kind of go through that example here um Da, 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 da. Wednesday, August 21st. Okay, cool. So four finger tap. Check my own phone. Did I? Oh, Nine. Did I? Yeah, it's talking to me. <laughs> okay, so. Wednesday, August 21st. Hardly cloudy. 81 degrees. At a glance. View. I'm screen off. Lock it. 9 p.m. Fingerprint not recognized. It. Lock screen. Device. Tap with four fingers. Practice gestures. Okay, so tap with four fingers is practice gestures. If I double tapped. And I'm gonna swipe down and left back. Or I Finish. swipe down and left, so I told you what it was. Back. Swipe down and left back. Swipe up and left. Player pause media. I change my settings. Remember, so it's letting you now know swiping up and left what it's doing. Swipe. <coughs> swipe down and right. Copy last spoken phrase. Swipe down and right. Copy last phrase. I love that feature because you could, as long as Talkback hears anything, you could actually you could capture that information. So if it's a phone number, website, etc really useful feature swipe up and right focus on first item on screen so i changed my swipe up and right to that but let's try to close this finish button i'm going to click on finish home, and i'm going to take four fingers and double tap talk back tutorial navigate up so button. now this takes you to a talk back tutorial so again if you're brand new to this to the game and what is why is this thing talking to me it's annoying me you could always kind of grab the bull by its horn and take it a piece by piece to learn what you want to learn. So let's see what this is saying. Swipe right to select the topic. For the best experience, turn on TalkBack before getting started. Okay, so maybe this is a little too fast for everybody to it's just speaking rate. Words. So let's... Lines. I'm using three fingers swiping up and down on the screen. Paragraphs. Headings. Controls. Links. Windows. Default. Speed rate. And there's speed rate. So now I'm taking one finger swiping down or up either way. So speed rate, speed rate, going with up, then it's turning it up she just left the meeting speech and speech rate speech rate speech rate 200 speech rate 200 speech rate 194 percent speech rate 214 percent yeah, that's discernible so basic navigation you can learn items scroll about basic and more text editing type select edit copy and more so that's oh, really pardon. useful if you're trying to work with uh editing different uh um uh, fields so if you're trying to write an email and copy paste a link uh you know, maybe, hey, uh, could you share my Zoom link with people, please? Or can you share this with somebody? If you heard, or if it's if the link was heard or the message was heard in a text message, I could always do that copy, text editor, copy type, select, edit, gesture. Copy and, more. and then once I get into an edit field, I would take that and triple tap with my fingers. Not editable. And it would, it would either say not editable because I'm not in an edit field, but those are some ways to copy paste quickly reading navigation read by word or character and jump between links controls or headings so self-explanatory if you're on a website you might want to read through headings and then go to links uh, kevin has come onto this call before and it's been clutched to find links especially with discord uh you're reading a long message and then somebody sent you a zoom link or some kind of website and you're like how do i get to play with that so again could be intermediate learning but for any case matter, you're on a website, you're trying to get to a website. If you uh, tap with three fingers, talk back menu, describe image, in list. You either, you'll get information about, you know, said links in tutorial. that menu. Reading, so let's, voice commands, control talk back with your voice. So there's that. Uh, you could, there's a gesture to have uh, talk back where it's like a, it's voiced instead. So you could tell it to copy a link, you could tell it to paste a link potentially, but you'd always have to hear for that beep or that bell that lets you know that it's listening to you, and then it will uh, take that action. Everyday tasks, learn how to make calls, send messages, and more. And then, of course, the tutorial also tells you how to do the everyday things, right? Because again, none of us knew this from pulling it out of the box. It was, you know, it took time, and you just have to be patient with what you know and how you know it. Practice gestures. Try different gestures to learn what they do. And email. again, once you're done with all of the reading stuff, with wings. email. Hush. When you're done with all of those things, you can go ahead and practice those gestures, just like we were doing earlier. So, just a little quick recap of how you could get to your uh, tutorial by 
tapping with four fingers on your screen or tapping once to test out what gestures you're you're doing so then those become from memory this is kevin go ahead kevin and just keep in mind that when you hold down the volume up and the volume down to launch talkback that this tutorial is uh, what comes up anyway and a lot of times this tutorial will come up especially if there have been new features so when it goes to 14.1 to um, version 15 there's going to be a tutorial or an update um, some update screens and it gives you a chance to practice whatever it is that um, has released new but if, when you first turn on your phone or when you first uh, decide that you want to use TalkBack, if it's never been turned on before, this tutorial is going to come up um, anyway. Great point, great point. Uh, one thing also uh, with the cycles of release of operating systems. So when we are on, let's say, something like, uh, with, let's use Apple, for example. Apple 18 beta is out right, out right now. But voiceover is part of is part of that update cycle, right? It, maybe voiceover does get its own little updates, but then this call also differentiates what is the differences. So, with the Android side, Talkback will get updated. So Kevin just mentioned fourteen one and fifteen and stuff, but that could be the Talkback version. And on the operating system, you might have an Android phone still running. Android 13 or Android 12. So it's not the same cycle. Just to note, you could have an older version of Android, but then have a newer version of TalkBack. And thus, these features are available to you. Um, we've kind of gone away from some of these old legacy days where some things worked on one and one didn't on the other. Uh, Samsung phones have pretty much retired those old phones, like the old Note 9 and such. So at this point, when you do have a Samsung device, you will update your TalkBack from the Galaxy Store. And if you're updating on a Pixel device, you would update from the Play Store. Uh, both Play Store and the Galaxy Store are synonymous to their own devices, but it doesn't mean that what is on the Galaxy Store won't work on that, or what's on the Play Store won't work on the and uh, Gal uh, Galaxy device. However, the TalkBack version always gets updated through Samsung, so Samsung's updating mechanism is the Galaxy Store. But that doesn't mean you install, let's say, Google Keep or another device or another app, excuse me, like Lookout or Be My Eyes or Seeing AI, that you would find those particular apps as mentioned on the Google Play Store. More questions, thoughts, concerns? It's all yours. This is Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. And keep in mind that if you do have a Samsung device and you have a, a Pixel device or a Motorola device or whatever, that the version numbers will be different because Samsung has decided to take the Apple approach. So you will not see version 15 until Android 15 is running. You will not see version 15 of TalkBack. And so far, they haven't even been pushing the updates that... So Google will just push out an update tomorrow. We might go to 14.5 TalkBack before we go to 15. If they decide they have a feature ready to go, They'll just push it. Samsung will wait. And again, sorry if it's a little bit intermediate to some of our beginners, but just to kind of give you a brief, uh, you know, know how, because once we get to these shops and stores, and by the way, this is Hershey, they will tell you, oh, well, get this Motorola. It'll do you just fine and blah, blah, blah. And what tends to happen? Uh, we, at the top of the show, we started off with introducing all the Pixel devices, all the pixely stuff and the reason being is that if you're a screen reader user typically the pixel devices are better for you because for one you'll get the most up-to-date uh, talkback versions and and all the bells and whistles 
it takes some time, maybe six, eight months is how I've seen the trend on Samsung devices. Not to say they won't be the same exact feature, but give example to the Braille keyboard. I saw the Braille keyboard maybe six months later on the Samsung device, but they still had the same looking uh, Braille, dev the Braille keyboard, the Braille input. So in, in any case, I, as, as a low vision user, sometimes will recommend if you still have some sight, it might be worth checking out Samsung and maybe worth having the extra features with the hardware. But otherwise, they're pretty much all going neck to neck at this point. And thus that for best of value and cost and everything else, um, Samsung 8 and onwards. So if you got an 8, 8 Pro, 8A, uh, the 9, 9 Pro, 9 Pro XL, 9 Pro X Fold, they all will offer you seven years worth of operating system updates. The only drawback to said companies like Motorola and such is that sometimes you might only get a year or two updates. And yes, the phones could be a couple hundred dollars, but that could have been a down payment on a phone. You could have paid monthly. Sometimes the A version phones are far cheaper at 350 on sale and things of that nature. So sometimes it's how can I help my own, you know, friends here that are vision impaired to save money, right? Because, or have vision loss rather. We want to save some money in that aspect. So it sometimes is feasible to go to something that's trusted for at least seven years. Samsung is roughly five to maybe even seven. They, they kind of, you know, one up each other every uh, release, it seems like. But, um, at least for what I understand for the Pixel devices from 8 onwards, you'll have 7 years worth of updates. So that means like the Pixel 5 will not get Android 15. The Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, uh, which I was using in India as a 6 Pro, it will have Android 15. Does it make far difference in my opinion? Maybe, if some of the features that you're looking for are not offered in one or the other. And so that just might be something to save you all some money down the road where, hey, this phone might be a little too out of my reach or I could pay monthly. And sometimes with trade-in these days, you get quite a deal. I've heard some people get almost like $700 to the 6 Pro, for example, was like, I think, $400 trade-in to get a Pixel 9. And if that says that for not seven years, I'm... I have a device that's going to work for me for the long haul. It might be worth it because then you could divide that by seven years and that's how much you pay for the phone over time. All right, more thoughts, questions. Sorry if uh, that was a bit much for information, but just to kind of save everybody some money out here. This is Foster. Go ahead, Foster. Yeah. Uh, speaking of of uh, updates, I think on uh, I think I was reading on the new um, the uh, One Plus, like the twelve and the fold. I think they've even gone to uh, like I think sit like I think I read recently five years of updates. Thank you for that. Thank you. It's, it's, again, yeah, it could be hard to keep up, right, Foster? I mean, you got. One yeah. plus, you got Sony, you got Motorola, you got Samsung, you got Pixel. Those are at least a few brands just off the top of my mind that is Android related. But then for international viewers and listeners, you all have Xiaomi, you have Vivo, you have uh, one Oppo. of those other ones. Oppo, yeah, yeah. Oppo. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, Redmi, yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, Redmi too. So, again, for most users uh, in the States and Canada, I want to say, you know, we're familiarized with some of these brands, but the accessibility is there. You pull a phone out of the box, you hold the two volume rockers up, volume up, volume down together, talk back starts talking. And for those that also have some of the, the other phones, I think uh, Shelly had mentioned earlier with the Blind Shell Classic and or uh, the 3 or I don't know. Go ahead, is that uh, Shelly? Yes, hi, it's Shelly. I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt. No, you're fine, go ahead, jump in. I just wanted to politely correct you. Um, I actually have a Smart Vision 3, 
Smart Vision 3, gotcha. So is that the same company that releases something like that? And, and that phone has buttons, if you could describe it? It does, yeah. So, okay, all right, let me pull it out and describe it. It does have a touch screen. It's, um, it is, uh, it does have talk back. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, we, we, we can still be heard. Um, um, I have a, I have it in this protective case uh, that I think we had to pay extra for. Um, I say we because my mother actually ordered it. Um, anyway, uh, so yes, it does have buttons. It has a screen. Um, the buttons are similar to what I call the house phone keyboard. Um, so, you know, the one, two, three in one row, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know. I think you get it. Uh, you all seem smart Is that enough. hashtag or is that pound? I mean. Pound. Okay. Because some people might call it hashtag these days. So, yeah, you got the um, the asterisk or star and then zero. I and then Sure pound. do. <laughs> and um, I can talk to it, although dictation has been a bit hard lately. Um. But yeah, it's uh, rectangular shaped. Um, there is one button for dictation. There are uh, volume buttons. They're on the right side. Um, uh, there is a button on the top right hand corner that I want to say is my like unlock button kind of thing uh, and power. Um, on the top left corner is a hole where I can plug in my speaker if I wanted to. Sometimes I have had friends complain about my signal, so I need to plug in my uh, good old-fashioned pair of speakers. Um, uh... Okay, so top left, uh, just to recap, so top left corner is the headphone jack, or you could you could put up anything with uh, a headphone jack kind of pin and yep. a power button on the right. Yep. And then on the right side of the phone is your volume rockers. Yep, you are correct. And then on the, is it on the left that the dictation button is? On? Actually, no, it's okay. So the, it's uh, dictation is more on the top right. Okay. If I, I want to see if I can, let's see. I'm trying to see if I could turn this darn thing up. Okay, there we go. Because I, 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 you know, was hoping to. Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. Come on, go on, go on. I'm talking to my phone. No problem. But we kind of get the, the general gist of it. So all the buttons are on the right side of the panel of the phone. And then on the left yeah. side, it's a blank, it's a blank side. Pretty much, except for one button that I think is like a camera button. Okay, mm. could be a to take a picture button. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I'm. I'm um. But yeah. Maybe it's... maybe you could report to us for uh, next month uh, when you come back if you want to come back and uh, let us know what that button does. We'll try to figure out what that button does. Oh the, yeah. The unknown button. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I just figured you might want to hear my the voice here. Yeah, it's a, the only thing. It's slightly difficult to hear it, but I, I think it's it sounds like a Google Voice, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Google TTS engine voice. Oh, yeah. It actually it sounds very similar to the voice I have on my Victor stream that's named Lily. So gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and again, some of these devices tend to have its own types of voices, as we discussed earlier. But the yeah. speakers, as we just to recap, you know, we have colors, but you have the male voice, the British racing green and the blue something, something. And <laughs> so it's just going to be a, an evolution change coming up here, I think, because the whole AI factor. So mm -hmm. let's see with uh, what, you know, AI has to offer with its voices, um, Gemini, is now looking like it's going to take over precedence to the assistant, but then it's going to maybe still be capable of still get that uh, assistant type of uh, item accomplished for you. So, uh, you know, if you tell it to turn on the lights or turn off the lights, 
it's going to be the the Gemini talking to you, but it's going to know, okay, you want the lights off and communicate for you with these other devices. So, you know, it, hopefully, as Kevin said earlier in the call, we'll just have better and better voices. But uh, do, do any of you have any more questions, thoughts, concerns, or input that you want to say? This is Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. Does that phone have the like a D-pad or any buttons above the um, dialing button? Oh, so I'm sorry. Are you talking to me? Yes. Yes. Um, wait, does it have a what? Dial pad? Does it have like, no, does it have buttons above the one, two, three? Like, are there buttons, like oh, hardware buttons? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, there and are. And calling yes. and so the, Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to describe those probably because I don't use them. Um, the okay, so there's um, yeah, so above like the first row of uh, you know, one, two, three, there's two buttons. Uh, let's see. So I'm probably gonna guess it's probably an answer and end call button potentially, maybe. Um, so, actually, no, I use my arrow button for that. When somebody calls me, I arrow down, you know, and I'll it. say, you know, call from, you know, say the name, and then um, I'll have an arrow button that I can press. And uh, yeah, so that's like another little rectangular thing. And there's two, let's see, the, like, I see those, these is like my right arrow, left and right arrow. They kind of remind me of, uh, if any of you read Braille, they remind me of the Braille letter L. Um, that's what the arrows feel like to me. Excuse me. Okay. It's not it's not actually Braille, but it's, you know, I just I, I guess that's the best description I can think of. Um, oh, and then there's a little square button in the middle of all those that feel like Braille Ls. And it's uh that's like my enter button. Um my so I don't know what the left two buttons do um, on the, the, the left side above one, two, three, but I do know the right, there's, okay, so there's uh, two buttons, let's see, yeah, so this one that's on the top uh, right above one, two, three, uh, that's like my back button. So if I'm in a conversation and I want to go back to my home screen, I can hit that. Um, the button below that, they are rectangular in shape, and the button below that is, like, my backspace. Okay. I just wanted to know for Appreciate some that. of our um, members. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to... Tiffany. Go ahead. Um, I'm new to talk back, and my question is, the recordings, um, do I go to your website, the iBug website, to find the recordings? Uh, would, do you uh, potentially use YouTube by any chance? I do. Okay, I would say YouTube is far easier. Um, if you go to YouTube and then uh, in the search bar type in iBug today, uh, go to the channel. Once you are at the channel, you will want to matter of fact let's let's do it live here do, 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 do. just give me a couple seconds here to swipe away a couple of things so youtube we're gonna go to youtube youtube cast disc google pixel wi-fi signal full google pixel five of live four of 21 and cast disconnected Notifications, Let's, subscriptions. I'm just going to go to subscriptions. I can find search, search button. button. Search YouTube. Edit so show. I, oh, Oscar. I. U. U. I. E. I. B. Bravo. B. Y. Yankee. U. U. G. G. Space. T. T. I. India. O. Oscar. O. D. D. A. A. Y. Y. Search. First ring daily 1006. Button. I bug today. At I bug. Go to channel button. Okay, so I got to iBug and I was towards the top of the screen. So I just stuck one finger on the screen and I swiped right and it said go to channel. So I'm going to double tap on that. Navigate up button out of list. iBug today. 
so once I'm on the screen, towards the lower half of the screen, videos button. You, you'll find if your finger touches videos, then you know you're pretty much in the right area. So swipe right. Live button. There's live. Playlists. And button. then there's playlists. So I double tap on that. Sort by page four of four. Now, drop down list. So I, playlist. I got miscellaneous file social events. I usually I like again video. like to button. use my finger just touching the screen, and I'm I'm touching towards the bottom. But if I swipe right from this. Action menu button. Playlist. It, action menu. Playlist. I bug in. Action menu button. Playlist. I bug Android Insight. I bug today 39 videos button. So there are 39 videos that are available. So if I double tap. YouTube. Navigate up button. Out of list. I bug Android Insight. And. Cast. Disconnect. Towards. Do you have questions about the Again, more. the bottom. Play all button. You could hit play menu. all and. Shuffle button. Shuffle it and what have you. So. The videos will be there. This, this specifically, like this call, will soon get uploaded. So you'll have 40 videos from past months. We've been on since uh, the pandemic, pretty much. And so about 40 videos. It's every third Wednesday is when the call is held. So any of this stuff is uh, available to you. And if you were maybe late on the call or uh, maybe you, just to repeat myself, uh, if you wanted to email us in the meantime, if you email a blank email to ibug, I-B-U-G, Android, A-N-D-R-O-I-D, Insight, I-N-S-I-G-H-T, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io, that's plural, and that will get you on our mailing list just for the Android Insight call, not necessarily the main one. And... If you have questions like, hey, uh, can you help with TalkBack or I have, I'm stuck with this, stuck with that, or I have this many, you know, dollars in my wallet and I want to spend it, what could I, how can I spend my money the best way? I, we're, there's a lot of people on there always looking through and like Foster's on our call tonight, Kevin, uh, Ms. Renee. So more than happy to help you with that. And then quickly just to, I didn't mention it all throughout the whole call, but I have to say it. If you have any suggestions like the answer or hold the phone to your ear and then pull it away, you're on speakerphone kind of mode or any of those cool little neat tricks and things, you could always email your suggestions yeah, yeah, or uh, send them over to uh, Google by uh, or go to the website g.co slash disability solution or d disability support, excuse me. And that will get you anything related to getting Samsung help at Motorola, it doesn't matter whom. And then same thing with Pixel. So that's just a couple of ways. And then Be My Eyes will connect you through a live agent. So that's just some ways you could uh, at least get some troubleshooting help. And Miss Ava, uh, when yep. can we find you next? Yep, we're down to our last three minutes of the call. So just know... Our next meeting will be September 20, nope, September 18th, 2024. That'll be the third Wednesday in September. So I want to thank everybody for a great call tonight. Good question. Hi, Ava. Hi. So, um, Ava. You, yes. <clears throat> Are you going to announce the thing we're doing Saturday? Oh, yes. Thank you, Foster. Yes, and if you're in Houston and you will be attending the ACBT, American Council of the Blind of Texas State Conference on Saturday, August 24th, um, I will be facilitating a workshop called Bridging Android, and Foster and Kevin are going to be my panelists on there to help us out so we can get Android out there and that would be from 245 to 345 on Saturday. So if you're in Houston, if you haven't registered for the conference, you can still come in on a day pass and we will be at the Marriott West Chase off of Briar Park at 2900 Briar Park. Okay. Excellent. Is, is there Zoom calls for people to listen in? No, we, we oh, will not yeah. be doing it on Zoom, <laughs> so you have to attend in person. Well, but I want to thank y'all. Best wishes to everybody, and thank you so much again to everybody for the wonderful questions and joining us tonight. Thank you.